Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Patek Philippe 5496P-001 Platinum Retrograding Perpetual Calendar. You can see this automatic winding Platinum Perpetual Calendar from Patek Philippe on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale high resolution images for your desktop, and actually complete pricing details for this Patek Philippe 5496P. Now as you can see, the watch is handsome. It's the original version that debuted at Basel World 2011, so it was the launch model for this new family. As ever, the Platinum Patek Philippe featuring a flawless Vesselton diamond between the lugs at 6 o'clock, perhaps the most sublime application of diamonds on a men's watch, along with a size that's versatile and easy to wear. Now on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see the watch at 39.4 millimeters in diameter across the round of the case is a good fit. It could be worn on a larger wrist and it could also be worn on a smaller wrist. I would say down to about 13 and a half centimeters in circumference, your wrist is going to wear this one with security and style and good proportion. It's a relatively slim reference as the timepiece, despite the automatic winding and the perpetual calendar with retrograde, is only 11.2 millimeters thick and it actually wears thinner than that as once strapped to the wrist, it does sort of settle down, nestle in and lay low. It's an ideal match for a suit jacket or a dress cuff. As you can see, the bezel itself is conical and generously sloped and from lug to lug, it has a manageable dimension of 47.8 millimeters, which means, once again, it's not likely to flare out at the edge of a small wrist, even down to 13 and a half centimeters. The strap is a navy blue with a monotone stitch and folded edges, large rectangular scale alligator leather, and on the underside calfskin, as you can see, pull tab spring bars for easy removal. It's a Patek signature these days, also employed by some show part LUC pieces and FP Journ. So pull the tabs with your thumbnail, remove the strap, change the strap, or simply clean closely between the lugs. The watch comes with a matching platinum deployant clasp, Patek doing things the right way, platinum clasp, platinum watch, fully polished inside and out. As you can see, filigree style Calatrava cross, and it provides a nice counterweight to the watch head, which is hefty. So if you have a hefty watch, you want a matching bracelet or clasp of considerable substance to prevent it from toppling off the side of the wrist if you like to wear your watch loose. Now the watch does feature a high polish case but the looks are delicate. The thing about using high polish is that it gleams, it glares, and if there's any indelicate flaw in the design of the watch or excess of mass, it can wind up looking unwieldy and garish. Here it looks sublime because the case profile is thin and drawn out. The lugs are fluid, tapered, handsome, narrow. From overhead, it has the profile of a Calatrava with the blended lugs. And as you can see, the only real definition lines are the junction between the bezel and the case band and the point at which the bezel transitions from vertical to a conical profile. The watch features a sapphire which is principally flat and broad, revealing a opaline silver dial that is a sort of very light metallic granular pattern. It's not a sunburst, so it doesn't explosively reflect light. What it does is glow with warmth, and I like the fact that this treatment was used on a watch that is principally grayscale. It prevents it from seeming antiseptic or austere. Outboard, you have a dimple style minutes and seconds track. You have a crescent style moon phase with a dark navy blue night sky, apertures for the day, the leap year cycle and the month, and then the retrograding date. The watch effectively the successor to the 5050 that preceded it. Coming out in 2011, it's broader, it's richer, obvi obviously more contemporary in its outright dimensions, but it has the same aesthetic. You can also note the use of polished white gold dart style indices, all applied as you can see, and the slight trench that has been cut into the dial to accommodate the retrograde date. You'll also note the small splash of color in the crescent moon as well as the retrograde indicator for the date. Turn it all over and you get a variant of the Caliber 324. Now this is definitely a minority application for the 324s. We typically see the 240 micro rotor in the perpetual calendars. The 324, however, is the newer architecture, beating at 
4 hertz as opposed to the 3 of the caliber 240. It has a 28,800 abrasion per hour beat rate and a power reserve of roughly 35 to 45 hours. It also features the Gyromax free sprung balance architecture for durability as well as the ability to hold a tight and precise regulation from a good watchmaker with a Spiromax anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, one of the technologies that emerged from the advanced research series of the mid to late 2000s. The finish is absolutely top-notch. As you can see, rich textured linear Cote de Genève perfectly aligned across the bridges, a tight and even perlage pattern across the base plate, plus a very tight perlage around the center of the rotor. There is a circular Cote de Genève across the gold winding mass with engraved Calatrava cross, and you can see from this angle especially, the rounded anglage or the polished edge to every bridge and the balance cock, mirrored, rounded, applied by hand, not achieved by simply holding the component against a machining device or a mill. This is old school, this is time consuming, this is expensive to achieve. As and you can really see it to good advantage here at the edge of every bridge lighting up. When I turn the movement square to the camera, you can also see everything that is black polished, principally the screw heads themselves. The highest standard of optical finish, also known as Pali Noir in French, it is excruciating and it's part of the reason why these are probably 50 Swiss franc screws these days. With the polished heads, the chamfered slots, their circumference has also been beveled down, and then the pilot at the bottom of the threaded stalk, if you were to back one of these screws out and look at the very bottom, them, that too would be mirror finished. And as you note, every jewel countersink also finished to the same standard. This is a handsome movement, an efficient winder with unidirectional winding action, more efficient than bidirectional, supplemented by ceramic rotor bearings at center. This is a timepiece that is contemporary, albeit with the classical standards of aesthetic delicacy and finishing virtuosity that we associate with Patek Philippe. A modern marvel having only debuted in 2011, you can see and you can own this perpetual calendar in platinum on our website.